growing up and all throughout um, my school, I was mostly friends with girls as opposed to boys. Um, starting in um, grade school, my best friend in the neighborhood was a girl named Katie Tom, and we would spend all of our time together, and we were basically just best friends. Uh, but moving into middle school, um, it wasn't common for girls to hang out with boys and vice versa. You really just stuck to your stuck to your own gender. And so I did make friends who were um, boys, but on the whole I just really felt more comfortable and I felt like I connected better with girls. Growing up there was just all boys in my neighborhood, so I didn't really have a lot of friends that were girls. Um, so to be honest, I really didn't hang out with a lot of people. I kind of became a little bit more independent than I think I normally would have been had I had um, a lot of like young girls my age in my neighborhood. I'd say I probably was maybe between like 10 and 13, somewhere in there. Um, like honestly, kind of in line with when puberty starts to happen and like when your hormones are developing and you're starting to realize that you might be attracted to other people. Um, I started to realize like, oh, I think that boy is handsome too. Like, am I actually attracted to them in the same way that a girl is attracted to a boy? It's just like a very confusing feeling. Um, after the relationship I was in my freshman year going into my sophomore year, um, I just felt like there was always something missing. And then even going into my relationship that I had my freshman year of college, there was always just some type of connection that was always missing. I would say by the time I got to college and I was in another relationship with my girlfriend at the time and things were great and yet I still felt those thoughts and those feelings were becoming even more prevalent and I was I couldn't ignore them anymore. Um, and so even, even though I was in a happy relationship and I really um, really liked my girlfriend, I knew I needed to take some time to really actively explore those thoughts and feelings that I was having instead of suppressing them. The hardest part was probably the fear of disappointment for my dad. And I know that's hard to say and you know like your parents shouldn't be disappointed in you because of things like that but you know my dad has done everything for me my whole life and my family and um, I think that was definitely the hardest part was you know, what's my dad gonna think? Is he gonna be upset with me? I just didn't, you know, that was really hard for me. So by the middle of my junior year, most of my friends at school knew that I was gay. So it sort of created a little bit of a discomfort when I would go home for breaks and over the summer and over holidays um, back home because no one at home knew that I was gay. Um, and so it was sort of, I had to go back home and be that old version of myself and then come back to school where I could really be who I was. And so I knew that it was time to finally just tell my family and then that discomfort would hopefully go away. Well, the first time I guess I officially like came out socially was on a retreat that I led um, at Loyola. I gave a witness talk where I talked about my experience basically and at the time this was like the most significant thing that I was experiencing so I talked about it um, and I came out during that as bisexual because I think that was like the, um, the only way I really could articulate it. And I kind of used that pre-written, like articulated essay, I guess, to like tell my parents. I basically read it to them. And I read it to my mom separately in public, actually, at the Cheesecake Factory <laughs> over dinner because I feared her response. Um, I had no idea how she would react. I kind of thought it would be bad and it wasn't terrible. Um, but I think the response like hurt me more because um, her reaction was, um, what are you telling me? Is this a phase? Like, is this a college thing? And then her third point was, I don't know, like, I don't know that much about this. I've never really experienced anything like it, but all I know is that it's wrong. And like, in God's eyes, it's not like who you're supposed to be. And it's not normal. It was just not a conversation so much as me just telling them and then they just asked if I was sure, and I said yes. Um, a little bit later that afternoon, my father had a quick conversation with me where he was trying to figure out why this was happening, or or if I was sure, or if you know I, I 
was prepared for a lifestyle that he really didn't understand too much about. So I think the toughest part for me was that I wanted them to accept it like right away and when I didn't get that necessarily I became very frustrated and like took it very very personally and um, so I would get into fights with my parents um, like why, why don't you just accept it I'm your daughter stuff like that not that I didn't accept it they just needed time to get used to it so I think for me the patience of waiting and giving them time to be able to, you know, come to terms with it. When it comes to minority words amongst the gay community, basically, I believe society has gotten used to or even raised with certain words to technically describe us, to kind of put us in a category, but those words aren't necessarily correct amongst the gay community. But words like fag and that's so gay and dyke and queer, those are more touchy subjects just because they're used in a negative connotation. Those are more like derogatory terms. Amongst the gay community, that's just as bad as saying the N-word or calling someone retarded. It's just as sensitive and there's other terms and words that you can use to call people in the gay community. The words that I've heard personally that have been more around me hearing or seeing things was um, you know, that's so gay, faggot, carpet muncher, um, you know, even just as simple as saying like you're a lesbian lover, um, just things, you know, those are the things that I've heard a lot of. Um. When I was, um, when I was younger, like right at that age where boys, voices were changing and like they were getting really masculine, that wasn't really happen happening to me so much. Um, and so people would point that out to me, like, tell me I was different, ask me why I was different. I had people ask me, like, why do you sound like a girl? Um, one girl said to me, like, you're so gay, you don't even know it yet. Like, just things that kind of, when you're at that age and you're developing, like, those things kind of stick with you and they hurt. In general, the use of the phrase, that's so gay, was very prevalent during my high school years and even into my college years. Um, and that has such a negative connotation if you're saying that's so gay to describe something that's weird or uncool. It has a um, it, it has a similar connotation to saying retarded. That's retarded. Um, it's a negative use of some descriptor that I identify with. Um. Okay, big thing when it comes to gender roles, it's so different amongst the generations just because when a teen or a young adult comes out to their parents or their even their grandparents the big stereotype here is that parents think and they assume that if a girl decides to be a lesbian that her future's over she can't have kids she can't ever get married she can't have a family that's that's just not true there's so many options it's all about if you get educated on the whole lifestyle of the gay community because there's so many options out there and my family innocently saying to me as a kid, like, you're gonna have a beautiful wife someday. That's an assumption, you know? Or like, assuming that a boy's gonna play sports or assuming that um, a girl is gonna like love wearing dresses. I knew um, that they sort of had a vision for how my life would play out and then that coming out and telling them that I was gay would really shift that um, vision that they had for me. And I, I knew just from my own experience, coming to terms with it myself, um, when you accept yourself as gay, you accept that 
the life that you had pictured for yourself is no longer possible. Um, not to say that a different life wouldn't be better or worse, um, it's just you have to let go of that old perception of what your life's going to be. So I think the biggest issue amongst the gay community, especially when it comes to individuals, is their fear of isolation. And what I mean by that is basically when literally they feel like they're the only gay person in the whole entire world just because the gay community is put into this minority group. And when it, be, when it comes to being in a minority group, there's so many opportunities to get oppressed and have oppression thrown at you. And, and there's so many different types of gay bullying. There's so many different scenarios and situations, you know, when it comes to physical, mental, emotional, verbal. But I think the most common in our era and generation is cyberbullying. And it's so easy for other people to hide behind a screen and to show up as anonymous on with cyberbullying online because they can't see your face, there's no way to track them, and they can do their dirty work from a distance. When I was in high school, probably a junior in high school, um, there was this website that um, a lot of people in our school were talking about. It was an anonymous posting website where anyone could go on, post something about something or some situation, um, but remain completely anonymous, even create polls. Um, so the one time I went on that website because I heard people talking about it at school, but then I was really surprised to see there was this one poll um, where the question was, who is more gay, me or this openly gay kid, the only openly gay kid at our school? And I was just very taken aback to see my name up there, um, just because I really didn't expect to find myself on this website at all. Um, so I really didn't know how to handle it, and I sort of didn't really talk about it with anyone. Um, and feeling for the first time like, oh, maybe people think about me in this way and I really felt like I needed to um, change the way I acted or talked or everything about me to not give off that impression. I also had um, some things happen online with like anonymous posting websites where the girl that I dated in high school, people would ask her like, how does it feel to have a boyfriend who's like covering up the fact that he's gay and like just things along those lines. Bullying and gay bullying especially comes from self-esteem issues. I feel like there's so many different scenarios on why that person technically bullies another person. You know, they have their own issues, they're upset with themselves, or it's because they're afraid of something that's different. They don't understand it, they're not educated on it, uh, they refuse to understand it or how they've got raised the, there was an openly gay kid in my high school and the one day he found his locker vandalized with the word faggot written on it. Um, though I've never had that um, word directed at me, um, that was a significant experience that I witnessed and it really had an effect on me. Um, I think people, once again, in the gay community are bullied because they are different and because it is changing the way that people think. For a lot of people, it's uncomfortable, and people don't like to be uncomfortable. And two, that they're just not educated about it. Background: There's been a lot of controversy between the gay community and religious views. And it's okay to be religious and accept gay people, or even be gay yourself. I know plenty of churches and priests that open gay churches or friends that go to church still. It's not a thing. You're not a child born of Satan or anything. I think a lot of people, because of what certain religions say about the gay community in a way, they take that as you don't belong. Still, um, it's just hard that you know you support you supported something your whole life. You helped the church. You preached. You know you did everything for the church, and it just sometimes hurts that you know they don't believe in who you are back. Um, it's definitely hard. You could be Catholic, you could be Protestant, you could be, you know, Methodist, but it's still, you still can always have faith. I'm, I'm, as a gay person, I am very religious. Um, I think people use religion as an excuse. Um, they kind of use it as a front. You know, they push, you know, the Bible at you um, and things that are written in the Bible. 
and they take it word for word and then they use it against people that are different uh, or believe differently than um, what that is. This is only a little bit of what life is like for me and people in the gay community. These are real life situations and they're not made up. You can't make this stuff up because this is a problem and it's still a problem. It has been a problem this whole time for years. I feel like the first gay person that ever came out was automatically rejected and that was the start of this continuous downhill spiral, downward spiral that's still going and it's not ending anytime soon and the big issue is is that it's starting in our young it's starting in our younger generations especially middle school and high school when you're trying to figure everything out because in all reality kids are ruthless kids are brutal because they don't understand they're not at that point where they choose or want to understand they just know that that it's in existence and that it's there other than that they only go off of what older generations has have taught them and if those older generations are neglective in rejecting what's actual reality then what do you think the younger generations are going to do they're not going to accept people like me the biggest age range um, for bullying is in that middle school to high school range and mostly because you're under the influence of your parents still, and you're under pressure from your friend groups. You know, kids are really, really trying to make friends at those ages, and if you're different, sometimes it's very hard to get in with, you know, the cool kids and stuff like that. So for any kid that is struggling with their sexuality, um, they're gonna be immediately targeted, especially if they are out at that age. And so you're willing to do whatever it takes to fit in and be accepted, um, and if you're gay, that's something that sets you apart from a lot of people. Um, and if you're perceived as being gay or different, um, that could have a negative impact on your, on your perceptions of yourself. Um, so there's a lot of different things that um, you have to deal with in high school and, and having to deal with um, putting up with bullies and, and the coming out process during that time would be, I feel like, very difficult. This can lead to a lot of things, like depression, anxiety, and worst of all, suicide. There are those people that are taken to whole other levels because of it. Um, you know, a lot of can develop anxiety, and today in our world, a lot of people already have that anxiety. So, you know, being someone who does suffer from anxiety, that was very hard for me. You know, it's always constantly like, is that person talking about me? Like, what do you think they think? Even if you could say, well, wow, they're like verbally telling me they support me. It's just always constantly going against that and being, you know, are they just saying that to my face? So I definitely think um, anxiety has played a major role. And also with, you know, suicide in general, but more specifically teen suicide, it has been a big issue. The major effects that happen with kids being bullied is the fact that they are afraid to be who they are. And that's how I felt, and that's why I waited probably longer than I would have to come out of college, because I just didn't feel like I was able to, you know, be fully accepted in high school, and that people were gonna understand where I was coming from, and that people weren't gonna look at me as like a weird kid. So, I'm gonna tell you a little story. So when I was in high school, there was this girl, Terry. Right off the bat, you could tell she was different because of what she wore, you know, baggy clothes, shaved her head, big shirts. She wasn't really athletic or anything, but people weren't sure what to categorize her as. And through the eyes of someone that is uneducated on other things besides their own type of lifestyle, then to them, she was a freak. She was an outsider, she was an outcast, she just didn't fit in. And what a lot of people didn't realize is that she would go home to parents that 
didn't understand and rejected her and people didn't understand the pain she was going through and for me that has gone through similar pain and for me not to truly realize and reach out to her I hold myself responsible for the day she kind of she killed herself she was 16 and she was an artist she was 16 and she liked golf she was 16 and she went to the movies and to fairs and to plays like anybody else but just because of what she looked like and what people thought she was into they rejected her so she found her way out I don't understand how people could think still today that being gay is a choice like I just cannot relate to that I don't understand where it comes from because it's so prevalent and it's the community is so marginalized that like why would people choose to be a part of that first of all and second like I don't know when you fall in love with another person like I just don't understand how anyone could pass judgment on that and tell you that it's wrong or tell you that like you're choosing that for whatever reason like you you don't choose that you feel it it's a feeling it's an emotion it's not something that you can um, that you can create yourself I'm telling you guys, it's never too late for change. There's always something that can be done and if you want to do it to end this downward spiral, it just takes simple things. You don't have to go out and try to change the world. It's just a matter of getting educated. You know, they say knowledge is power and it's totally true because if you're educated on a lifestyle that's different from your own, you become so much more open and well-rounded to on how to help people and how to go about treating people with respect and love and compassion in all the right ways. You know, and a big part of it is awareness, you know. If we keep treating this problem like it's not a problem and brushing it under the rug, this spiral is going to continue to happen unless we show awareness of how important that this truly is and show support for our peers and our friends and our family. I think people really just need to have an open mind and really not be afraid to take a look at things that are different, people that are different, things that they might not understand and try to see from someone else someone else's perspective. I think educating people um, is the best thing that we can do because especially the younger generations because I don't know if older generations especially like those my grandparents age are ever gonna have their minds changed but I think especially in our generation we can start that revolution going in the right direction. I'm not a dyke. And I'm not just a lesbian. I'm a human being. I'm Fallon Schwab Davis. And I'm ready to take this stand with you if you're willing to make a change. Then stand with us.